duck fly uh, or basically they're what the duck fly is in this case this is a weight fly but to tie the duck fly what I'm going to be using thread wise this is a uni in 8 in black the hook is a size 14 super grub this one's made by fulling mill it's a nice medium wire hook that's very strong the one I like now first we start and then a layer of thread the length of the thorax or really until you're in line once you let the bobbin go the thread's in line with the point of the hook now I'm going to be tying red holographic tinsel on the way round the bend I want to try and keep the body quite thin so this is the best way to do it times I wouldn't recommend you winding something onto a bare hook but in this case it'd be okay all I'm going to do is wind it round Really keeping it really on the top of the hook until we get maybe four or five mil away from the right, the bottom of the hook, and then for the body. In this case, this is dyed black peacock eye. This is a quill. This is normally we strip these and they have a quill body, but in this case I'm going to keep the hair on. Now the way I like to use these is simply to tear one of the quills from the peacock eye. And then you'll have, at the very end, you'll have a fine piece of the, the stem of the feather. It's a fine piece of skin. It's very flexible. And when you, especially with dyed black, it does take a lot of heat to dye black. You'll find sometimes that it gets a bit brittle, the fibre. So having something that's flexible like that, especially when you're going to bend it and tie it on like there, is what you're looking for. It makes it easier when you're tying the fly. Less likely for breaking anyway. Now, I'm going to bring up the red holographic first. Just touch and turns, bring it up. Now, you could use a pearl underbody, silver, whatever colour you would like, and then tighten up. But the red, and especially in the black com combination, certainly works extremely well. Now, you could use a very fine varnish. Or in this case, some super glue, just very fine. And now this is brand new. This is a, a new bottle of super glue, which has basically, when it's brand new, it's at, it's at its best, and it will not bloom on you. Or basically, what they call blooming, it get goes white. They'll not do that. Now, what I'm going to do here is wind the peacock hair and space it out much like you would rub a fly, but quite close so that you can see the, the red holographic between each turn and now the leading edge is the hair so make sure when you tie it on now what I do is, when I tie it on I make sure that the, the hair side is on the bottom and the edge with no hair is actually like facing or facing the roof of the house, so basically up the way and then make sure this is tied in can break it off and then tidy up. Now, what I would normally do is allow this to dry before I tie anymore, but I'll carry on because sometimes it'll you know, take a minute or two for the super glue to dry, uh, especially if you're using varnish. Now this here, the cape I'm going to use for the wing, the wings on this fly, is this is an Indian cape, and it's a I'd probably call a grizzle. Now these small feathers here are ideal for forming the wings. Now, basically what I'll do is take two off the same same length and I'll just line them up. And now I don't remove any of the fine fibres from either side. The length you want is basically just around by the bend of the hook. You want either side. Now all I do is hold the ends, come round with two or three loose turns don't tighten up really until we see where they're sitting you can manoeuvre and push them where you want you see that's them sitting nice and once you're happy then tighten up 
Just run your thread up and then remove the excess. It's very easy to do. Get one up and then come back down. Now you're looking for some red seals for or substitute, whatever you've got. Just fill the thorax. You could put a bit of flash into this as well. It's entirely up to yourself. Just slide it up. This colour combination works extremely well, especially for the duck flying island. Once you've formed your thorax, then you just simply make sure your thread's at the front. Anything going forward, draw it back and hold it back with the thread turns. Now for the hackle, I've got here, this is a badger hen. Now I'll need a turn and a half, and tie it in by the tip. Now I'm tying this on the side, with the good side of the feather facing myself. And then two or three turns there, pull back the tip, fold it back, bring the thread turns up. Now keep a hold of the thread, keep it tight, and then grab the tip of the hackle. And you could take it off. And then all you're looking for is a turn and a half. There's one and a half. Now, really, you're looking for the hackle fibers to reach the point of the hook towards the barb. That is long enough. Now, again, take your thread two or three turns down towards the eye and fold the hackle back and bring it back up. Three or four turns. Just forget everything just now and then come in and let finish. Trim away your thread. You can break away your hackle. To see how things are sitting. Basically it's like an adult midge. It's a very good style and pattern. This is one I like. And it's been working extremely well. It's certainly worth having in your box come the duck fly season, then all you have to do just come in with some varnish all the way around just watch you don't touch any of the feathers, the fibres and there you are, and that there's my basically Irish duck fly pattern using the red holographic and the peacock quill very simple to tie but very effective Thank mm -hmm. you.